Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. Welcome to Wrestling With Entertainment, bringing you exclusive breaking news, breaking the rumor and innuendo, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, Ring of Honor, New Japan, and AEW every Saturday on YouTube and CastBox. I am Hollywood James J. As always, Big Sexy Coleco Yachts. Hey, ladies. <laughs> what up, James? What up, Mitch? Back to back in the house, one more guy. And the bad guy, Mitch Mayhem. Hey, yo. What's up, everybody? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> and today on the show, we will be previewing Class of Champions. I don't even know why we do this at this point. Our, our predictions are garbage <laughs> and they never come true. Except for Mitch, because, I, he, because he changes his, his <laughs> pick every time. <laughs> no, it's because I used to wrestle, so I kind of, if you've been in it, you kind of, you honestly, as it comes on the screen, you can kind of predict, you can predict the, like, good, if they were to write good scenarios and good storylines, you could be like, oh, okay, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But, but if the they're not on their game, it'll just be shit. So. But on the show, I mean, you'll, my- say, you'll say, no, I'm going with this guy. But the, the next week when the show actually happened, you said, well, I changed my pick that, that second before the match started. Be- <laughs> because storylines, okay, when I, I, my predictions are a lot of what I want. Then when I see the storyline evolve from what they want to happen, I go, oh, and I look at it as an overall and I, I take a, you know, a, a educated guess on what I think is in their mind, not in mine. So You're a cheater. And then I go from there. So, so No, I'm not a cheater. I'm an you, evolver. You are a there cheater. is a big difference. I evolve. I don't cheat. I evolve. That's something triple You, you know, the, wait, 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 wait. The, the best of, wait, hold on. The most stubborn people in the world, <laughs> they, you, you, they just keep to their guns no matter what. Smart people like me, we keep ourselves open to new facts that might come along to to better uh, improve our decision making. What's wrong with that? So go with that, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> he's, he's, will, it sounds like he's. We will what? also. I didn't hear that. We will also be reviewing the Madison Square Garden shows from Raw and SmackDown. Uh, but first, we are wrestling with the moment of mayhem. So, what do you got for us, Mitch? It's been uh, it's been a spell since you've done this. Yeah, and we're just gonna have a little drive through today. Welcome everybody on the Mayhem Moment, brought to you by Wrestling with Entertainment. We have a few prime stories for you. I'll get right to it. First off, the whole uh, ordeal with Chris Jericho and the quote-unquote stolen AEW World Heavyweight title. I have it under very bubble good that. source. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of the bubble. Bubble. And <laughs> that's been memed to death. In, in about a week, everyone's going to just like not want to see that anymore. <laughs> it's been done to death. But nah, it was fun for the I, first like few days. <laughs> oh, there will be many of us that keep there will be many of us that keep it going. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> that that, that the problem. is now a staple on the show. But uh, continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. And anyways, oh, we do this all the time. It's part of the show by now. Uh, <laughs> devolve into other stuff and then get back on track. Uh, so, yeah, Chris Jericho and the EW quote-unquote stolen title. I have an under very good authority that what actually happened, what they were trying to save face. And you can't, you can't blame the co- a company that's just coming into fruition with a TNT primetime slot to, say, to admit the truth of what happened here. So what... They said that the title got stolen. Like Give I said, me the truth, Mitch. Give me the I truth. Believe, everyone said it's the safe face. What really happened, in my opinion, 
and from what I've heard from, from other people, is that <laughs> poor, or I think they did this for the limo driver's sake. The limo driver driving Chris Jericho accidentally left the title on the back of the limo and drove off, hence why it was found on the side of the road in Florida. <laughs> And um, I just imagine what Chris Jericho did to that poor kid. Oh, my God. Oh, my I God. I mean, you can't man. All this stuff, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. It, they, like, you, we, before we came on uh, the air, yeah, like you said, the, the stuff that's real, you cannot, anything that you make up will not match up to it. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so true. Like, but. Between oh, wrestling, like, since 2016, college, yeah. Like since wrestle, other than professional wrestling and college football, there's some shit you just can't make up, bro. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, like it's the only. stories you hear from professional wrestlers, like you could only believe happened in pro wrest two pro wrestlers. Right, and they keep a lot of that, like what really happens, factor sync. To themselves because a lot of this information the true information will expose the you know the truth behind the scenes and they're like the wizard of oz of performance they want you know they want to keep that curtain behind them to protect their ability to perform and i understand that well you but know, there's there's going to be a lot of trolls trying to, to get behind the truth of it and break their kayfabe characters and you know well you know i guess that's what we are the belt was <laughs> stolen from the back of the limo Sounds a lot better than Jericho left the belt on top yes. of the limo and it got thrown out the side of the road. Do you really think with them not even on TV yet that they would really say, oh, yeah, we lost the title. We, we, we're, uh, you shouldn't be giving us like thousands of dollars of stuff. We'll just lose it. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's like the worst promotion ever. Of course, they're going to hide their shit. And, and like hi, make it seem like it's something else. Come on now. Yeah, and, and it's some you know some of those quote unquote brainwashed fans and are shitting on me on Reddit saying like, oh, there's nothing wrong with AEW. Those shows are fine. I love them. Um, well, but like that might you, be there. If that you might be there. for the fallen, like you know, you enjoy car crashes and kicking puppies. Okay, well, hold on. It's it's in the eye of the beholder. I do understand that because there are some people that they just don't like the entertainment side of WWE. They like the spot fists and they like the more athletic side of it, the indie wrestling style, and that's what AEW provides more. And it, the, I don't like like the overly crazy comedy stuff, like the Michael Nakazawa's and the Orange Cassidy's, and they love that stuff, and that makes me throw up. So. There, there's very that you know, like there, there's a big group over here that likes this. There's a big group here that likes that. So it's, I and AEW is trying to have a melting pot. That's why they do, you know, Cody style, Kenny style, and then the Buck style. And I, I, I appreciate that. But yeah, you get real quick. You can definitely see the unprofessionalism still in a young AEW that they're still trying to learn the ropes of everything. And, right, and, uh, you know, New, J uh, New Japan has, you know, guys like Yano and Taguchi who do that funny ha-ha type of match. And it's okay for that one kind of match. But... Yeah, but it's not shoving your thong down someone's throat. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, like <laughs> but, skid marks. And, I mean, that's yeah, over the top. <laughs> well, what, what I'm trying to get to is that, you know, you're, what they're doing is borderline just incredibly fucking hokey. It's okay to it's have those... Making, but, uh, it's okay to have those sorry, funny ha-ha matches, as long as it's not completely and utterly ridiculous. Like, shoving your dong down somebody's throat. Right, and that's why I understand, like, the old schoolers say what they say. I uh, totally understand it. It is a slap in the face, especially to veterans who have taken this seriously their whole life, and like they have injuries to prove it that limit them from doing normal stuff. And then they see these guys government. come in here and, and they see these guys come in here and, and joke around and make a mockery of it. You know what I'm right. saying? Like to, in their eyes, in their eyes. Right. But back on topic. And so I get that. Back on topic. Well, that was on topic. That was yeah. part, that was topic. 
but I'm saying, either way you look at it, if Jericho lost the belt uh, in the airport or whatever, or he left it on the top of of the limo, it's still a, a great fucking story. It's still hilarious. Oh, t- but, but they did a damn good job of covering that shit up. Off to my boys in the back, I wouldn't have known either. So. Well, I could believe that he believed that the belt was stolen. No, he knew exactly what was going. I think, the, dude, the the lawyer or the lawyer, the limo driver was probably paid off to shut up about it after he lost the title. Even oh hell yeah! So and I don't believe that. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't believe that Jericho let that limo driver touch his belt. I believe it was Jericho that put it on the top mm. of the limo. And if it is that, it, you we will never know. <laughs> that we will is never so know. A Jericho thing for him to do. I don't know. Jericho's really professional. I he I don't. Uh, I because he when he was world champion in WWE, he held. He, he had to hold on to that like it's your last meal ticket. And but don't you I, uh, have you ever heard the story when he uh, the night he won the undisputed. World Championship. I know. I don't like. I, I'm in terms of like historical, like going out party stuff. I'm not. I know some of it, just not a lot of it. No, he that night in the when he went to his hotel room, he got locked out of his hotel room with the belt inside <laughs> the room. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so he has a precedent of this. Oh, okay. so something like this happens to Chris Jericho. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, this there's a precedent. Okay. Yeah, so, like, gotcha. you, you read the Jericho books, like, you you think, well, yeah, this is a very Jericho thing to happen. Right, and, man, like, it, it, it's just funny, like, uh, not even a day later, they made that video. I knew something was up. I was like, yeah, I smell something. I, <laughs> yeah, I said the same. He was covering his ass. He was covering his ass. Yeah. Make a Facebook video about it in a jacuzzi instead of being <laughs> right, right around the streets trying to knock Dude, out somebody could... like who took the belt. Thank you. You can <laughs> tell me. <laughs> who, found, who found the belt on the side of the fucking road? Oh, there was a, they did a uh, news interview with the guy who found it. And he said, I just, and he even said, I think someone just left it here or, or lost it off their car because it was just sitting in dust. <laughs> and you know what? If that was in Jackson, me, that's though. like the ultimate souvenir in, in my book. Why, why oh, and you did, oh, I, I, I forgot the best part of that story. I'm sorry. Okay, so it was like a older guy, like in his 50s. He didn't know what the hell it was, and he tried to put it on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and well, then they found it on from there. Not even no, eBay. not on eBay. Exactly. And that's how you know yeah, he's old school. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you just can't make this shit. <laughs> I know it's great. It's great. But I mean, I'm not well, t- well, I'm not trying to shit on him too much. I understand it's a new job by himself. I, I you know, that's a lot of pressure. But he's wor- he's used to it, but until he you know, Kenny, the Bucks, and them get more name rec- and Cody get more name recognition, and then the others, you know, other people with big names, more, you know, come come and establish themselves. He, he's got a lot of pressure on him to basically carry the company. So, and then he left that uh, left that pressure on top of the limo and let it drive off. Mm, yeah, he did. Like I said, I don't know <laughs> if he <laughs> did, so I'm gonna say the limo driver did until I know. <laughs> I want to meet Jericho one of these days. Touch his, touch wanna... his belt and let him put it on the top of the uh, of the limo. Uh, then you know I got a to sell you, Mitch. I mean, Mitch, okay, well, you got too many. Well, well, James, James, too many chair shots. <laughs> James, yeah. I want to be able to meet Jericho one day. Oh, well, I got him. <laughs> if I shit on him right now with all this, I doubt he will. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Jericho so. knows I love him. He's my favorite wrestler. So. Oh yeah, he knows who we are. He yeah. wouldn't just ignore us. Yeah. Yeah. You answer my <laughs> tweets, Jericho. He takes it in stride. Yeah. Oh, dude, he, it's like him and Steen. They know. They know by now how to do it. Like they. they it, it, and it's hard not to have like look at it egotistically because they have all this knowledge and 
they just got to do what they know is best and go about it because they handle it the, some, uh, out of you know, some of the best in the business. They handle it really well, and they know how to not let that shit get to their heads or bother them, no matter how bad it is. And just drink a little bubbly. <laughs> a lot of bubbly. Yeah. Not a little. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had a lot of bit. <laughs> I don't know how he's not hang up, hung over for a week by now. All right, Mitch, what's your next piece of news? Okay, hold on just a second here. All right, and then my last piece of news for the day is the rumors that impact wrestling. Not There's two stories we have here. First off, they Anthem now has a majority ownership in hd net which um i believe they have access they have a connection to access in some way and the tv and uh, the announcement of them and access collaborating together and having a show on access happened today as well but the rumors also exactly but the rumors are also stirring around that impact is trying to buy or work with ring of honor in some way so that will be very interesting to see what transpires out of that. That is really interesting. <coughs> um, I'm not entirely sure how how that would work. It's kind of, you know, going from one homeless shelter to another at this point. Well, to me, what it signifies is they see WWE, AEW, and they, they see heads, they're thinking, all right, our only salvation is if we team up with someone like Ring of Honor because they're in the shit storm too. They're not; they're floundering just as bad, maybe worse. Yeah. Uh, rosterized for sure, and because like, you know, let's champion. try. But if we merge together, maybe we can make it a three-way race in America. You know what I mean? Over time. Right. So maybe that you know. Trying to put together the resources of both, but with corporate corporate America the way it is, I don't see Sinclair giving up power anytime soon. So. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that's a definitely we'll see because I can see. Yeah, I, I don't think Sinclair, of, Sinclair would give I up power. I'm giving more credence to WWE than it. I just don't see, uh, like I said, I just I don't see Sinclair giving up the power they need. They would need to give up. Well, you know, for Impact Wrestling, new, um, Ring of Honor has that New Japan partnership. Uh, so, that's something that might, yeah, that's going to expire soon, and the talks are maybe Impact gets that. It, exactly. So, you know, they if they do renew with Ring of Honor. And I Impact it, Wrestling but, is yeah. um, getting buddy buddy with Ring of Honor. You know, it gives New Japan inclination to give those right. superstars to Impact Wrestling as well. Which right because Impact Wrestling took a big hit uh, recently with the loss of LAX. Yeah, yeah. but okay, hear me out here. I, I but in but my they, opinion. They, they are too, they are, right now. They're too deep for that loss to really matter. ROH does not ha- even have one fourth of the roster depth that Impact has right now. Like I said, Impact Wrestling's roster is better than AEW's, and it can at times it can it can rival NXT's. I won't go WWE as far as WWE, but it can rival NXT's, and. So that is of a market value right now, guys. It, it, like in terms of weighing Ring of Honor over Impact, the the only thing holding Impact down is their old name recognition of what happened to them from the past and having a do not uh, a do not sponsor thing, uh, you know, held over them for what Vince Russo did in the past, to where that people won't sponsor the name Impact or TNA, you know. Right. I mean, Impact had their Departures too, though. I mean, other than LAX, yeah, um, you're right, Scarlet Scarlet Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yeah, you're right. uh, But, but but they did get girl. They they did get my girl to Neil Dashwood. I mean, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, it's it's gonna take a lot more than Tenir Dashboard to get them out of the hole. Uh, but um, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, I didn't. Move. No, go ahead. Sorry. It's a. Uh, they're finally not the cam goal of professional wrestling anymore. They have to put those well, pasties on. Uh, well, they're still on Twitch. <laughs> they're just now. They're the they're the thought of of e wrestling of wrestling. But they're gonna, the uh, they're going to be on uh, Access Channel now, so they have a reputable channel behind them now uh, that, right. you know, people actually oh. get and watch uh, um, New Japan on. Uh, so those, oh, re- those fans might cross <laughs> over if they haven't heard or haven't watched Impact Wrestling for some time. Right. And real quick, I just remembered uh, there was a slight other uh, news story I had, but it, it ties in with Impact. It's what Coleco said about, yeah, well, they lost uh, LAX. They lost people, too. Well, someone was at a recent taping of Impact that might be signing with them, Joey Ryan. Oh, God, no. Fuck no. I know. I can't believe he would sign with Impact over his friends. That um, got me. I don't think it'll happen. Just but no, that got me out of here. No. <laughs> no, no, no. All, everything you could put in, t- in front of no, put it in front of Joey Ryan. Yeah, it would be your nightmare. It, it was Joey Ryan and Zack Sabre Jr. on Impact. Oh, th- that is just a nightmare waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for putting that in my head. I think it's gonna happen. No problem. Watch. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so... Yeah, we'll stay on top of that. You know, Ring yeah. of Honor is fucking fluttering at this point. If their uh, shows to- are yeah. uh, 25% full, that would be a lot at this point. Honestly, I don't... Do you remember me in April saying, like, their roster was diminishing and that I did not see... I saw them going nowhere but down, like, about five months ago? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, well, I saw this coming, bro. Well, when you have... <laughs> Matt Taven as your world champion, it could only co Matt down. Taven's Matt Taven's a mid carter at best in in uh, NXT or even maybe Impact. He'd be maybe an upper carter, but not a main eventer. I mean, we haven't had like a lot of. But chances. he's. We haven't had. I would have put the title on Marty Marty Scurll. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, we haven't had a lot of time to talk about Ring Ring on Bono. But when you know you're going to lose Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, right. Hangman and, Page, half but, your fucking roster is wait, leaving. N- not what? just that, but then, it, it, like, it, out, six months after uh, that, so in okay. uh, October to November, which is now, you're losing Marty Skrull as well. But why wouldn't you have, why, when you lost all those guys, why not put the belt on Marty? Get those extra couple ticket sales. Oh. I think I know. You're right. I know why. It's because he told him straight up, I'm not re-signing with you. I'm going to go with my friends. I'm pretty sure. Uh, they don't want to put the title on someone that's not going to benefit him going forward past the time he's with them. It doesn't benefit them otherwise to do that. Until see I see nope. hard proof rumor. Uh, rumor well, he's uh, it's up n- November 1st. November first, his contract's up, and he will be in AEW. That's I don't. That's not a rumor to me. And it's been planned for a long time. So we'll Just see, you know. and yep. we will cover it if, it if it or if it doesn't happen. Okay. Well, just hear me now. I'm saying it will happen, so you can say okay. I'm sorry, Mitch, that I didn't listen to you. <laughs> well, uh, that will <laughs> never happen, Mitch. <laughs> oh, will it? Okay, we shall see. Oh. That. You got it. Yeah, you, you got to put some faith in me. When I say something, you got to put some faith in me. <laughs> yeah. That, that was a... That was a no- well, I mean, Shane- you've been teasing the Marty Skrull push from AEW since April. Okay. Since after... Yeah, oh, yeah, I, since I, after I, oh, okay, the, yes. Uh, Thank you for bringing this up. After Go ahead. the uh, Madison Square Garden show, you were saying like, oh, this is it for Marty. He's not coming back. Uh, right. I was, I was because, I, because I was unaware until I talked to my friend in mid-May that he decided with his buddies, the Bucks, Cody, etc., that 
it made no sense for him to join AEW right now to to kill his momentum where it was right now for him to sign a six month extension for Ring of Honor, continue his momentum, and then bring that momentum to AEW in the fall. That was the plan. But but I didn't know that until mid May when it happened. I thought he wasn't going to sign an extension. So that's why. All right. All right. Well, glad we cleared that up. Uh huh. Is there anything you'd like to add <coughs> before we finish the moment of mayhem? That's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Moment of Mayhem, brought to you by Wrestling with Entertainment. And now we are wrestling with Monday Night Raw from Madison Square Garden. And all honestly, this may be the first time I've watched Raw on Monday, kind of straight through. And honestly, it was a Pretty solid show, if I have the same show myself. Where are your thoughts, Coleco? I thought the same thing. Uh, uh, I thought they had a couple matches that were lacking. In specifics, to me, it was the Ray, the Ray versus Grand Metal League match. I thought that match would have been a lot longer. Um, <sighs> but other than that one, it's Pretty much was really solid. I say the best match was the tag match with uh with the Boston Boston Hug connection versus basically Becky Becky and Charlotte because they kind of let them go long. Yeah, and it almost it's like they let them. I think they started at the top of the hour. I want to say, and they let them like run that thing a good twenty thirty minutes. So. It, it was really good, like for them to get that exposure because they're basically doing what we thought they would have done maybe three years ago, but 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 better late than never. And Mitch, okay, I believe this week was a step down from last week and the weeks before. W uh, Raw has a consistency. With Heyman at the helm, it's pretty strong, but even Raw had a little bit of dip, in my opinion, from the quality of the last few weeks. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, real quick, uh, Baron Corp, the, what, what stood out to me is the Corbin, the Corbin and Gable situation that's going to be at head next week with King of the Ring finals. The way that Corbin has just come back from all of us, just hating the gut shit out of him. And I, I got to give my hat off to Baron Corbin. He has turned believers out of people that hated him. Do you know how hard that is to do? <laughs> I hated his guts. I didn't want to see him on TV. And he made me start to like him. That is like a superstar trait. That just is. He's a superstar. And they I were mean, right on him. I was wrong. I was wrong. I, I mean, they had that. the crowd yelling, we want Corbin. Want Corbin. Corbin sucks. And that's kind of what started Austin. Like or rock. that is crazy. or the rock or the rock. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but real quick, I still okay. So, I believe WWE would Vince Vince McMahon would want to go with Corbin to win. I think that's the obvious. But with this short man gimmick of having Gable be a giant killer, I think Gable that's going to be Gable's push. I think Gable's going to win it, but. Corbin doesn't need to win it by now. He's already a superstar now. Right. And nah. we'll, we'll, we'll cover I, that. Corbin doesn't need to win. Cable does to get to get more of a push. We'll, you think Corbin's fine the, if he loses, I think. We'll cover as long that, as he loses by DQ. We'll cover we'll that a little later, but, uh, you know, uh, my, just my thinking of it all is that, you know, WWE is a babyface territory and Chad Gable right. is a babyface. That's yeah, they ended Kurt Angle's career. They ended Kurt Angle's career at WrestleMania with Baron Corbin, though, and everyone hated that. So it can happen. It can uh, happen, right? But how many it, pushes are they going to give Baron Corbin before? He, oh, they, they love finally him. Give him up. Uh, get what? Are you? T okay, I'm confused. He's just getting hot now. What are you talking about? Vince is probably writing his jock now more than ever. What did he's, they he's like, they gave him the money says, in the bank, and they made him he, lose it in like 30 seconds. Because he probably wasn't ready in Vince's eyes now. 
this sees all of this. I, sh I shoved him down everyone's throats and they hated him. And then they made him, he made them love him. And so he's probably going to kiss Baron Corbin's ass even harder now, man. Are you kidding me? I will say but, but one thing about that's what I man. Think. He is consistent when he wants to push somebody. He's consistently stubborn. You're damn right on that. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, real quick, uh, SmackDown is the drizzling shits. And we will cover like, that later. The drizzling shits. And that, okay, but real quick, what I had to say is, and that's unfortunate because it used to be the exact opposite around. It used to be that Raw was the lesser show in terms of quality in the early 2000s when the first uh, brand split happened. And that SmackDown was the you know the better show quality and you know what i think the common denominator in that is paul Heyman. because yeah that's definitely because paul Heyman I'm hate, wrote, wrote yeah. smackdown back then and now he's writing right now i i'm not afraid to admit it i never met the man but i'm a paul Heyman guy what same here and let's start off raw well. The show started off with Stone Cold coming down to the ring, drinking some beer, and talking about old moments he's had in Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, when I see Stone Cold, I don't kind of want him reminiscing but about what he's done, but I'm still not going to be mad at him for doing shit like that. He's I mean, Stone Cold. Gave him like, he, yeah, he's done so much for the WWE. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Clico. What are you saying? I know it's 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 not in his wheel. Get what you're saying, but I mean, I guess they're one to, to up the significance of how important it was that they were at the Garden. Because to be quite honest, since the Barclays came, they kind of treated <laughs> like yeah. a stepchild, bro. So they, you but, know, they gotta you gotta show the relationship that they have with MSG. But real quick, I want to contrast what happened with Austin on Raw to what happened with Undertaker on SmackDown. No one gave a shit about Undertaker. He came out, he did his usual thing. We were, the souls will rest in peace. Choke slams him saying, leave. That's it. Rinse and repeat. Uh, Austin, yeah, he did his little skit too, but it hasn't been seen like that, where he was like a main, uh, ed, like a main competitor, and he was in the ring doing his beer salutes. They haven't seen a lot of that, and so um. it, 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 in quite a while, it's not, it's not like every week, you know. And, and well, he's very exciting, and we still. He was just there for like they're like, he was just there for not too long ago when they but, did a little, but. Uh, every no. Shows. But not like Taker, not even not even like Taker. He doesn't come back. He hasn't had a match. He hasn't been back to the ring. That's what I'm talking about. But what I, I mean, it, he get, he gets in. He just plays to the crowd. And he does what he does best, and it's it, that's like the best harken back to the attitude era in terms of when people say, "Oh, I miss the attitude era." That's probably what they miss the most. No. So, well, one of them, but then yeah, I'm just gonna say it. Taker, tap it overrated. Never been the guy. He's been a oh. cornerstone, but not the guy. He was the yeah, he was. He was the guy in, <laughs> in the two, in the two thousands. What are you talking about? No, he was for not. sure, dude. Triple. Bro, it went from it went from uh, the menace. Nah, we we're gonna have to agree to disagree. To heart, to Michael, to Austin, okay. to Rock, to okay. Triple H, to Cena. Okay, okay I'll t this is what this is why I say you're wrong because. I don't care what you say. Yeah, Triple H might have been the leader to Vince McMahon, but to that damn locker room, it was the Undertaker. He kept them all in line, and that's just a fact. Yeah, Austin, there's, there's a difference between being done. the leader and Yeah, the one kisses the boss's ass, and the other keeps, like, tries to inspire the boys. What would you rather have? And, and the one that gets money in my pocket. That one. <laughs> what if both of them do that equally, and one does it with more respectful tactics? That's all I'm saying. One does it with undercutting tactics, where he uh, kisses the ass's boss, and then marries his daughter to okay, get into the business. The bar, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> Austin, uh, after the reminiscing, Austin introduced Braun Strowman. Strowman offered to shake Stone Cold's hand, but Stone Cold did not accept it and introduced Seth Rollins. Oh. 
and that's an interesting uh, little oh. uh, snippet in there. Huh? Smart move. Right. Uh, yeah. Essentially yeah. just yeah, show it that. Yeah. No, it just showed like the whole he he was out there for the business. So that I mean and it and it made a moment where it was like, yo, Braun might knock his teeth out for not shaking his hand. You know, you never know, man. It's, nah, yeah. not to me. I mean, so, pretty much cuz it cuz like when they were like They've taken off go like the the crowd's kind of no But to me they've taken all the viciousness out of Strowman. It's like predictable by now. In my opinion. Uh, Seth Rollins and uh, cut a promo about being in New York and the what chance and Stone Cold and just kind of uh, came across as like a a 10 year old kid as they signed the contract for their match at Class of Champions. And then uh, mm-hmm. the OC came out and AJ Styles cut, uh, you know, a bad guy promo. Uh, Stating that, you know, Stone Cold is old and he hates the what chance and all that good crap. And then Mm -hmm. they got in the ring. Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman cleared the ring out. And Stone Cold gave AJ Styles a Stone Cold stunner. There is your... There is your Madison Square Garden moment. (laughs) <laughs> yep and to me uh-huh. it's I mean it was just to get the ball roll to do what it needed to do to get everybody involved and to get Austin like to get that that AJ moment to show hey this happened at the garden at the garden and just a quick little info Seth Rollins only person to hold all three championships with the tag title Simultaneously. Just thought about that. He's held the universal title and the tag title, intercontinental title, tag title. You like this dude's like slow key with like in been trying to be coming up there, going getting up there with those great uh, with the reins. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than getting Stone Cold stunnered by Stone Cold. Inside Madison Square Garden, that must have been uh, a big moment for him. Oh yeah, it's always a big moment. I mean, it's just the the. I mean, anything in the garden other than the the G- was really really good. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right, that led to a match between Cedric Alexander defeating AJ Styles with a D. De- Q in 8 minutes and 45 seconds. Nothing too special about it other than a way to set up the main event. Why the Viking Raiders came out, we don't know. But, you know, needed a reason to get them in the main event. But it was also a way, because they uh, added this last minute, it was a way to get uh, Alexander AJ Styles at Clash of Champions. Right. So yeah. I mean uh, it, it just did that was basically the, the the reasoning for the match. And if they high on Cedric Alexander, because he's been like yo, with I'm Roman Reigns him. hanging out with Styles, like I mean he was always a good wrestler, but they usually like had him in the background and that's a good thing for him. I mean, because he's an underrated guy. Yeah, real quick, I'm glad you said that, Kaliko. There's three guys that Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman really wants to push, and that uh, that's Cedric Alexander, Ricochet, and Bobby Roode. Those are really good picks. Yeah, but I think Samoa, I, Samoa Joe should be in there, but I know why he's not, and that's because he's over 40 years old, unfortunately. He still might get this chance. It's, you know, I hope he does. You know, but he's been he's been buried, bro. He really has. I don't think he can go much further in WWE. I really don't. Kelly They're buried. Always buried. talks about timing, and it's not the right but, time. But they have given yeah, him I like mean, all the shots in the world to where 
but they've given him all the shots in the world to where he can't ever win. He looks like a like constant loser. I think no, I don't think anyone like that can ever come back and win the title. I think he's con- he's permanently buried to a certain level by now, in my opinion. Oh, I, I don't think that that's the case. I, I think I, I think Vince has done that in his own mind already. Vince has limited nah. him. Nah, oh, you don't know Vince. <laughs> you don't know Vince McMahon. Or you no, don't know that. But what I'm saying is he's one flip to smack down away from being the man. Like straight up. Okay, yeah, but that's not where that that requires the backstage like the road agents, all those people that decide who is on what brand to do their damn jobs right and put the people who will get over over the most and get, you know, more more eyes on them to where they can do more on the right show. That's their job to do that. So if he's on the I wrong mean, show, not able to get enough time because of that, that's on them, not not Joe. I mean, the fact that they got him literally, he was literally in the semi. My thing is this: after all those he, title shots, he was he literally in the semifinal. He was in the semifinals of the King of the Ring. So what? That so was not, a tease. It, but 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 you're missing the point. Like they, if they really wanted to bury him, they wouldn't even put him in the tournament. So that shows okay. that. Okay. Okay. Real quick. Kid, you know, he's a I good. Just wanna, I just want to. I just want to tell you something, Bobby Bob Hawley in 1994 won a match in the King of the Ring tournament. Okay, I'm just letting you know, uh, jobbers that they call jobbers do it all the time. They'll win a match or two. Doesn't mean anything. It's just for purposes. A little bit different though. Next match. I see. Yeah, I see where you come from. I just yeah, you, you, that's just what I believe. So, yeah. Next match: Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch. And Charlotte Flair defeated SmackDown Women's Champion, the Big Bad Booty, Big Bad Booty Bailey and Sasha Banks in 17 minutes and 24 seconds. Honestly, this was the match of the night. You, Pretty much. Real quick, yeah, real quick. Um, this, yeah, it was a great match. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't expect that good of a match from. Or okay, let me say it wrong. Uh, I said it wrong. I expected a. Uh, like, oh, we've seen this before kind of thing. But they pulled out some stuff that, you know, it wasn't like the same old, same old. It was a good match. Well, you may uh, have I just... seen it before, but you haven't seen it in this incarnation of these characters. You know, the man. No, uh, the, only, the only change is, is Evil Bailey. 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 The only change really is Evil Bailey because Sasha's always been a tweener kind of in the past. I don't think she... Can, can we just get this out of the way? I don't think Bailey's being evil. Oh, no. She, I know. I know. I can't understand that. They still have the hug music, and they still have her being nice as shit. But they all, here, no. real quick, the only heel act she's doing is siding with her friend. And, and here's what gets me. She's being a tag-along as the world champion. That makes no sense. But, yeah. I agree with Coleco. I totally agree. You know, I don't what? think they'll. I think they'll maybe testing the waters to see. But At me, this you know, always going to love Bailey for just because she's Bailey. You know what I mean? I yeah, the only thing they're testing at net by now is my patience. Go ahead, Coleco. <laughs> Sorry. Nah. Go ahead, Coleco. I, here's how I'm gonna break it down. This is how I. Coleco. Coleco. We're having audio wrong. issues right now. Oh, there you go. You got me. We're yeah. having we're having audio issues right now. I'm I'm cutting in and out, or I'm not hearing you right. I hear you now, but oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Good job. So everyone knows this. Yeah, we can hear you, Coleco. Bailey, yeah. okay. Bailey, Bailey, and Bailey and uh Sasha are best friends. What I like what they're doing with Bailey is it's not a heel turn. It. it People think it's a heel turn, but it's not a heel turn. What best friend would you not have their back thick and thin? Whether you think it's right or wrong, you still okay. have this you thing know what? called loyalty. It's playing okay. the loyalty card, which makes people think it's good that she's being loyal, but it's fucked up that she's being loyal to a bad bitch like that. That's like the greatest oh. thing that they could have done because I hate it. When they just go straight heel and full heel, this is something where any human being on earth, whether 
everybody on earth had that one friend that you knew good and damn well wasn't good for you, but you were still their friend through thick and thin. And that's what they're playing with Bailey, which is totally relatable to anybody in this world. Okay, okay real quick. I got an analogy if I uh, say so myself. Yeah. And I had some stuff to add to that. Okay, real quick. I agree in the fact that it's adding gray to the character. Okay? And there's a similarity to that that I'll tie in just a second, but hear me out. Uh, that, okay, so what I was saying about that I didn't like about it is the, the way she's being presented because it, it's hard to see that gray because it's hard to show. Yeah, yeah you have this like uh, menacing act she did, but it was only for her friend. It, it, they're kind of doing it, but they can do it better. Now, I believe the right way it should be done is the way AEW is doing that same gray aspect with one person being only face or heel to only one person, and that's MJF with Cody. That's, that is, that's exactly what you just explained, but the AEW form. But, but I, and but they, I, I think they started it first. This, I, I personally this, think yeah. this is the slow burn to do burn. Because you forget, Charlotte is still technically a. I think they're going to turn you know Charlotte saying? slowly back to face. Yeah, that's my point. But so people love the, Charlotte. Uh, you know which way. Yeah, people, I see. People, I see that happening. Yeah, true, but ahead, but it's a slow burn. It's a slow burn to me where they're flipping those two because Charlotte's been a heel for like, damn, it, it feels like she's been a heel. I mean, but it's slowly pulling that shit back. It's but slowly... it's going to be hard to get people to cheer. It's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to get people to cheer for her, though. Not necessarily. Well, it's going to get hard at first. Mm, I don't know. But, but Not really. I was early. But my point is, is that rather than just going straight full to show you that perspective, that that human element perspective that anyone can relate to. Shades of and that that to me, it's not even a shade of gray. It's just like, yo, I'm I'm just helping my friend out. Like that's what and that's basically what but, Bailey what said I mean, last week. Was, but what but what I'm saying is use use that to make more of a broader like it, make it more broad to the roster where it's not just baby faces and bad guys anymore. If you can get who they are, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Going forward, but, as we evolve in wrestling. Yeah, but that's what Bailey said last week. She was basically saying, "I'm still the same person, a great role model. I'm showing you girls loyalty. And the one thing I know that girls always do is be loyal to their friends, even when they know they're wrong." And and mm, that's, I've seen some catty that's shit, just, but that's, yeah. that's a great <laughs> element that hasn't been like tapped because everyone all, always goes. I get what you're saying, but it's a hasn't been. Yeah, not all girls, but yeah. point. Everyone, everyone sees. I get what like, you're saying. Oh, you're right, right, right. I'm just helping my friend. All right, next. Uh, I'm not doing right. anything. I get you. Next, uh, no, you make a very good point. Yeah. Next segment, uh, Dolph Ziggler oh. and Robert Roode approach the OC and exclaim that if they walk together, they can earn the place. And that set up the 10-man tag later tonight. Uh, Rey Mysterio defeated Grand Metalik in 6 minutes and 24 seconds. You know, Grand Metalik had to be careful in this match because, you know, Rey Mysterio kills motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, cold blood. I mean, it was only six minutes. It's not like he's going to kill him in six minutes. That's, that's so fucked up. <laughs> All you need is two. <laughs> that's so fucked up, dude. You know, okay, um, I don't know if I told you that story. I found out about that death literally while we were at the WrestleMania 31 thing. We were all at. Like, I learned of that while I was walking the hall. That was crazy. I remember that. Yeah. On, uh, and, you know... Rey Mysterio retired the other uh, the other week, and Dominic, uh, you know, said for him not to retire and to keep going. So any deaths that Rey Mysterio it, caused, it's on Dominic now. The blood's on. It's him. gonna it's gonna lead to Dominic in the rain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 
King of the Ring semifinals triple threat match. Baron Corbin defeated Samoa Joe and Ricochet in 14 minutes and 8 seconds. Boo. What the fuck? It, it only, okay, like I said, uh, Baron Corbin has really made a believer out of me, but not at the expense of Samoa Joe. I'm sorry. Just no. Well, it, Ricochet because, at this point, you know, you're going and Ricochet, you're to, right. You're trying to promote Ricochet. But here's the thing. Give but him it, that it, King of the Ring crown and you know, you, he's a little bit more over. Honestly, I think that was the original plan until Elias got hurt. I think it was going to be Ricochet Elias in the finals, if you want me to be honest. And that's then his injury I, changed everything. That's yeah. what I was thinking, and yeah. this uh -huh. match fucked that up. Yeah, and then they said, okay, well, this happened, this injury happened. It's call an audible. Uh, Corbin deserves it. Let's see. Uh, Gable, we've been doing this uh, storyline where he's a giant killer. So getting him to the final, you know, that'll help him a little more. So it, I, unless they were, I, so I, I don't know. My, my heart wants him to win, but I agree with you. I think the original outcome was Ricochet and Elias with Ricochet coming out on top. I'm pretty sure. Natalia defeated Lacey Evans in five minutes and six seconds. Nobody gets about that. Yeah, I was going to say real quick. Nat okay, and it breaks my heart saying this because I grew up. My Okay, you know how everyone has their first guy, and it's usually Hulk Hogan for a lot of people growing up? Mine was uh, Bret Hart. Bret Hart, until I met him, <laughs> was my hero. <laughs> you must have um, put him on a bad day. Yeah, yeah, probably. And I've heard that that's just how he is, but uh, it's all good. But um, I, I, I digress. Uh, Natalia has, like... Okay, not only is she, like, getting up there in age and her athleticism for the WWE, but I can't stand the Catwoman shit. I can't stand – I just can't stand her, her personality. Cat She's woman. annoying. I she was crazy, crazy cat lady. Okay, crazy cat lady. That's even worse. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> she dri No, okay, she drives me – like, her personality just as a person – I, I honestly would probably commit suicide if I had to, like, be, uh, like, if I was in her family or something. She would drive me insane. She really would. Ooh, what's that in the background? Yeah, that was Grand what's going to on? leak after he was. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, well done. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was good. It's time for, you know, Natalia, <laughs> her time's come, and it's time for her to maybe become a trainer. <laughs> I was, you know what I thought you, at first I thought I heard you say, it's time for her to become a tranny. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, a trainer. Clean out your ears, Damn it. I know, I know. I heard it right. I'm just messing around. Firefly Funhouse. Uh... You know, the the thing that came out of this that was that the clock was at 316, Bray hit yeah. it, and it went to 1119. Well, what there's I've two... Been hearing, oh, sorry, go ahead. What I've been hearing is that uh, they think that that's going to be an Undertaker Bray Wyatt match. God, I hope not. They've beaten that, <laughs> that gimmick to death. Um, but he also said, see you in hell. Which kind of yeah. makes me lead to believe that uh, he's getting that um, Hell in a Cell match in October. Okay, from what I know, the plans have already been Is Hell in a Cell. Is behind you, Mitch? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I got to deal with that. Get the dog out of my house. Hold on. The big dog. Just give me one second. So what are your thoughts on, on the whole situation, Coleco? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh... We have we have lost Calico. <laughs> but go ahead and repeat what you were saying so I can hit my dog took my mind off of what I was saying. Sorry. What repeat I was that, saying no. was I don't uh, I'm not looking forward to another Undertaker Bray Wyatt match because oh, okay. that's been to death. But right. uh you know, the thing with him saying see you in hell leads me to believe mm -hmm. he's getting that hell in the cell match. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So yeah, that is pretty much confirmed by now. That for two weeks, or two Firefly Flint houses, he has finished off with See You in Hell. Uh, that's been the plan. Uh, like I said, after, since after the uh, Finn Balor match at SummerSlam, I believe, 
um, yeah. they were gearing up for that. For, and it makes sense because, uh, number one, Bray Wyatt has been featured on that uh, pay-per-view in the past, but number two, it's the ho- October Halloween-themed pay-per-view. Yeah. What way to make him like come to the main event in that like it's perfect timing you know what i mean like it, for a, for a halloween mask to come out and so wwe can sell even more of those you know what i mean yeah uh and then and then so yeah so that's definitely happening and then the clock aspect of it so you, the rumors are what you said about possibly the undertaker facing him it, it could either be one or two things what you said or him like a special surprise at Survivor Series, and then the details about the Undertaker thing you mentioned is the reason why it could be the Undertaker. Maybe is because not only is that date this Survivor Series, but that was also the date of the Undertaker's debut in the WWE. Right. So I hope it's yep. not an Undertaker. <laughs> I really do. Oh, I'm with you. The only way I'm okay with that. Is if he, he is doing it to pass the torch, and that's legitimately his last match. That's the only way I'd be okay with it. I wouldn't even be okay with that, honestly. No, I want him to close out. He, I want him to close the book, like, uh, definitely. And show us, and make it very clear that he's closing it. And that he's passing the torch. Because since Bray Wyatt came out with the fiend character... What's the number one thing? I know the number one thing I've heard is, oh, thank God, they finally have a new Undertaker character. Or the new Undertaker. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, a supernatural type character. Right. And um, so th- it makes sense that they would clash to give Bray the, the push, maybe, and end Taker's career. But it's not going to be a very pleasing athletic uh, contest. No. <laughs> by any means. Well, Bob, but you, you wouldn't. Come. But you wouldn't need it to be. You want it to be where Wyatt's coming back bigger, faster, stronger, wouldn't you? It, it, right. It's a, it's a what do you call it? It's a, sh- a showcase. It's a showcase uh, highlight match. And, and and for the record, Taker did pass that torch. But, it was to Roman in thirty three. <laughs> but you can't pass the torch. You can't pass the torch if you're coming back. That's my point. You have to. Con- you have to. You, you can't pa- – hear me out, Clico. You can't pass the torch, then in a year come back and say, oh, yeah, I, you know what? I was wrong on that. Let me have that back, please. No, nah, he, went, not, back, he no. went back to defend, oh, defend, sweat, defend, shut up. <laughs> defend the new big guy. That's what happened. I'm telling you, that's what they're doing. He that's went back because he's greedy. He's greedy, and he wants more money. That's the end of it, bro. I mean, he, wanted, he wanted more he, money. If, if he, 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 the he, amount of money that they're paying you know what? him to come and bro. Uh, destroy his career more than it already is, you would do it too much. You know what? Oh, well, you, you, you're damn right. You know why? Because he's got a wife that's probably got, like, <laughs> got, like, the whole city working on his bank account. <laughs> Michelle McCool, my God. She she's so high in the high maintenance. It's not funny. So yeah, you got you got to you got to not only provide for yourself and your family, but your wife, who's like a a good what a good million dollars a month. She spends, I'm sure. No, she. Oh, seems, I've heard some I stories. Mean, I've heard some stories. I met her. She seems cool. No, she's very cool. I just never mind. I need to shut up. I'm just <laughs> what I'm saying is like there's some reason that he keeps Let's doing this away. and going back. Even though he knows it's hurting his uh, his you know legacy, it, 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 he wanted he said he was gonna not let this occur. So there's got to be some undercurrent in his life that is forcing him to make this decision against against his better judgment. I would say so, and, and it's none of our business. I will say that. Nice. So that's kind of why I'm like, you know what? I need to just back off that. So. It's that Arab money. That's what it is. I'm telling you. <laughs> Our main event for the night, a 10-man tag match of course. between Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, Cedric Alexander, the Viking That's Raiders, about right. and they defeated AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode in 19 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, this, stuff, this match definitely was flat for me, uh, and you could tell from the crowd doing the wave that they was not into it either, unfortunately. Yeah, it was just a meaningless match. I think if they had it did the 
but they, I think they already pushed it when they did the AJ Cedric main event. But you can't go that, back to that like twice in a row. So I mean, you could only do it so many times. So I mean, they just did that so that way there's some there's no giveaway about what's going to happen Sunday. But you know, who well, knows? All right, and that should cover Monday Night Raw. Now we are wrestling with. Tuesday night SmackDown for Madison Square Garden. The show starts off with Undertaker coming out and talking about the Undertaker and Madison Square Garden and the shit he's done there and the soul he's buried. Then Sami Zayn came out and took a choke slam from Undertaker. Pretty cool moment for Sami Zayn, I have to, uh, I have to believe. Uh, but Undertaker really didn't get anything out of that. I mean, but it, I think that's just to show that even though with all these damn losses Sammy's been taking, he's still considered high regard. <laughs> well, to get, a, uh, the, to get a segment with Undertaker, they have you would have to be. Exactly. Well, yeah, real quick, uh, my audio keeps messing up. I, I was trying to talk and answer Coleco when that happened. Uh, real quick, to add what I was saying. Uh, the Undertaker thing. Uh, uh, as I was saying, he, oh, I, like I said, I just heard things, and it's really none of our business, so that's why I was like, oh, you know, never mind, I'll just shut up about that. But Haven't just you got, but my, got my point, on the Undertaker enough on this episode? I got, I got cut off, so I don't know what you guys heard. But what I mean, my point is that there's got to be some point, that, like something in, uh, holding him back or making him do that. That's all I'm saying. And that's none of our business. It really isn't. So, next, the next segment, Chad Gable entered Shane McMahon's office, and uh, McMahon proclaimed that Elias broke his ankle. I'm not entirely sure if that's true <laughs> or not, but uh, no, I uh, think that there was an injury. Is... I just don't think it was like it wasn't a break or nothing mm -hmm. that serious, right? Yeah, and McMahon Sorry, good, said that yeah. he would find a replacement for Chad Gable for later tonight. The next segment, yeah. <laughs> the Miz defeated Andrade with Selena Vega and Shinsuke Nakamura on commentary, even though he was only speaking Japanese. <laughs> no that. speak English. I love that. No speak English. Dude, Nakamura has been consistently one of my favorites since he joined NXT. I've been I wanted him to be champion uh when when it was him and AJ at WrestleMania. I wanted him to win it. Like I I see it, it like his value. He is to me, I I consider him he's like a mix of Elvis and Michael Jackson if he was a wrestler. His cadence. You see his cadence is Unlike any other person's, the way he moves, the way he walks, Mitch, it's beyond unique. Mitch, what you just said piss me, pisses me off a little bit. Ugh. Because Ugh. if you never seen him in New Japan, this... I have. You have? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, because you said that you saw him in NXT, and I was thinking, well... You okay, what I meant was, was okay, NXT, it's very, good Japan. point, good point. Okay, what I meant was... I supported him in his WWE run since NXT. Okay. <laughs> Let me clear that up. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but there we go. What, I, what I'm saying is, yeah, Nak finally Nakamura is getting somewhat of a push. The way that the, this segment ended with him hitting Miz with the Kinshasa kind of makes me believe he's not going to get that W class of champions, but... That's what it sounds but, like. But you know what, real quick, it, I think they're botching Sami Zayn, and what the hell are they doing putting... But I'm glad he's not anymore, but they put... That was totally, like, out of nowhere for no reason, putting Zami with uh, Nakamura. Nakamura, number one, first off, Nakamura needs nobody. He, I think he's better than Sami, like, by himself. Sammy needs to work on himself, and they're just feeding him to to wolves, so to speak, in terms of letting people get pushes on him or get you know get over on him. And I just don't know when it's going to end and when it's going to turn around for him. Well, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know whose dinner. Right I don't know whose dinner he pissed in backstage to piss like to get mad. He did something wrong. 
unfortunately, that's just where Sami Zayn is right now. He kind of needs mm. to be in that little buddy um, position Why? to get over. Why? I no, don't know. No, it's just maybe, how, maybe. It's, that's just oh. how they view yeah. him. Right. It, see, that's the thing. I'm glad you said that. That's the problem with WWE sometimes. If Vince views you a certain way, even if you're not, and you can prove it, prove him wrong, it doesn't matter. If you don't get any time to show him you're not what he thinks you are, and he doesn't put you on TV, and so he just pigeonholes you to think, oh, yeah, he's this, and you don't ever get a chance to change his mind, then there's no changing his mind. He's stubborn. You know this. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's hard. Next segment, Shane McMahon approaches Matt Hardy and Apollo Crews, and oh God. He's, talk, uh, he's looking for Chad Gable, that little guy. Real, real quick, and okay. Then oh, he reveals no, no, no. to Chad Gable that he will be his, his opponent for later tonight. Real, real quick, it, it amuses me how, and this goes back to what Coleco said earlier, it amuses me as to... We're in 2019, and they're still trying to bait us on the fact that there's really good guy and bad guy in locker rooms. Really? Shut up, WWE. There Don't insult my intelligence. Guy bad guy locker rooms. <laughs> <laughs> the blue one is for the baby faces, and the red one's for the heels. I know, it's blue it's pill, a, red wait, pill. What do you, you stupid idiot? It says G on the banner, and it says B on the banner for the bad guys. What, what more can you want? <laughs> but B could also stand for babyface. You're making a that, confusing. Yeah, thing. that's true. Okay, okay. B and H. <laughs> B and H. Sorry. B and H. Don't make it more confusing. You don't. You don't want <laughs> walking into the heel, uh, into the heel locker room and getting beat up by all the heels. You never know. Yeah, I'd just prefer he walk into the door that says exit. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Nikki Cross <laughs> defeated Mandy Rose. That's kind of that. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Next. Okay, real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Mandy Rose is the new Eva Marie. Yeah, well, she's she has no. Yeah. She looks exactly like her is what I mean. Like, yeah, she wrestles better than her, but she's boring like her. <laughs> well, well, she's better to look at she's, too. Uh, they look. Uh, she she's thicker if you you know my meaning by that. But she honestly, her face, their faces when they have their makeup on, look very eerily similar. In the locker room, Ember Moon approached Bailey and said that um, you know, she wasn't happy with her attacking Becky Lynch, and Bailey was trying. to uh, proclaimed that she was trying to elevate the division and that she should thank her. Which sets up a match later t uh, that night. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's... Real quick. The, it has to do with the women's division, if I can, real quick. Uh, we, you know, we're talking about all these women. There's one that we're missing out on who's not on TV right now because she's in the middle of a gimmick change. Liv Morgan, I don't know if you've heard about that, but she's, like, cutting off her hair. She's going to have, like, a dark, brooding, like, it's hard to explain, a gimmick, like, the girl who's been shunned. And so, like, it's hard to explain. But it's it's going to kind of have a dark connotation. So well, she, that's I'm on its way. I'm looking forward to that because yeah. Ember Moon has no heat with me. She has no uh, high with me. She's kind of just on the roster. She's kind of just there. And I kind of really don't get a feel for who the fuck she is. Right. Oh, yeah. They completely took anything out of her that was unique and special from NXT. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. She did, she did have she did have special uh, written all over her in NXT because she didn't have handcuffs on her as to what she could do. But as soon as she got to the WWE roster, it was like she was lost. Heavy Machinery defeated two jobbers. Like, that's real smart thinking, how you're having oh. a show in Madison Square Garden and you you get fucking jobbers. Hey, this is a unique... Uh, I gotta tell you guys this. Those oh. jobbers... Those jobbers trained with Scott. Or Scooter. Excuse me, <laughs> Scooter. Scooter. 
So the world is small. <laughs> yeah, the world is very small. It's a small world after uh, all. <laughs> after all. Yeah. It's a small world after all. <laughs> Touche. Yes, it's a small world after all. <laughs> That's good. Uh, you hit, you've been hitting some uh, some stankers out of the park tonight, James. Good job. Yeah. I'll give you credit where credit's due, man. Yeah, when <laughs> my head's actually working, I kind of come up. <laughs> I come up with good stuff. Yeah, when your head's not, it, when the ostrich head isn't in the sand, it works a little better. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Owens supports Shane I'm McMahon in his office, and Mr. McMahon, oh, Mr. McMahon, Shane McMahon. I mean, it well, is Mr. He's one of the misters, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't got that the same far thought. off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shane he saved the dude yeah, that from he a helicopter Kevin crash. Owens to be the referee for his match and he'll wave the um, whatever the oh, prime boy. was. Do I have something to say about this? Okay. Uh, and, you know, Kevin Owens had a lot of great heat coming up, building up to this until he got slapped with that that fine and now he's kind of has his tail between his legs at this point. Which kind of sucks. Okay, uh, when when they first brought around WrestleMania time, they botched him to death when they tried to make him like a, oh, I'm just like you. I eat hamburgers and I do the, 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 I guess they were going with an everyday man kind of thing. And it made him look more of like a fool. And uh, so they re- let him return back to his edge, kind of what he does. And he, he honestly, before this this week, he was one of the best characters on WWE TV. He was kind of reckoning the old, or coming back with the old Steve Austin attitude, kind of like against authority. And the crowd was they getting com- behind him. He was yeah, but they, they completely cucked him and his character tonight. I, I don't understand. Like, okay, at first I was like, oh, I love, I love how they're making Shane the heel and... As long as Shane loses, I'll like this because I wanted him to do this at like last year's Survivor Series and not have him win, but just have him act heel like that when they were having him as a face doing that shit and get the winner of that tournament over by beating him instead of giving him the win. And when, but when I saw what happened, it my, my, I just like part of, Part of, you know, when I try to hope that WWE is good, just died inside of, inside of me, my faith for them. They literally took a shit on one of their worst characters, or best characters, excuse me. I, in my opinion, all of his progress has been completely stomped out for now. Yeah. Any thoughts on oh, That's the... so unfortunate because he, 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 last four months, he was on his way to a world title uh, opportunity, in my opinion. So, yeah. He might still get it, but I don't think the fans will view him as, you know. What's your thoughts on uh, Kevin Owens, Kaliko? He's Kevin fucking Owens. They're going to fucking love him regardless. He's Kevin yeah. Owens. They didn't love him with that uh, when it, Brown Mania when I, you know, when they gave him that shitty gimmick. I mean, because, I mean, I think they just were glad he was back. I mean, because he was out for a hot minute. So it ain't like, uh-huh. you know. But that when you're you, for a wrestler, you need to have people out for uh, like after they like Finn Balor just left. He's been around for at least two years. You need to have them take some time off so the fans miss you. Otherwise, if they get too uh, used to you, like in the past with Roman Reigns, they get tired of seeing you on their TV. No, but for him, it was surgery, so he had no choice. Well, I, I, but um, I'm, I'm talking about in in general. I'm talking about in general, just as a care for character, like people when they have time off, like after being on TV for a long time, it kind of refreshes them with the general public to where they're like, oh, okay, they're not being shoved down our throats, and I miss him. So yeah, it, it, it's weird. It's a psychological thing, I think. The next yeah. segment, Eric Rowan came out and kind of trying to explain why he attacked Roman Reigns and that he was the mastermind and the manipulator, even though. Nobody oh knows why he attacked Roman Reigns or what the fuck this rivalry was about in the first place. Um, I don't think the writers know. Yeah, no, <laughs> nobody, nobody knows what this was going. This, this was like lost shit. 
uh, real quick, I don't know what this was, what, like, you know, uh, the Rowan lookalike. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but I do, I did hear from someone who said, if you know what, I, this is the quote, unquote, this is the quote I got. If you knew what that was supposed to be, you would lose your fucking mind. They won't even say what it's supposed to be because it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah that's Bischoff. That's Bischoff. Everything that's been garbage about this rivalry and why we should really fucking care why Roman Reigns is fighting uh, Rowan, uh, this was actually a really good segment in my mind. And yeah, it, with, just, it was... I, I just can't get into Rowan. I liked it. I think that they had a good brawl around the ring. Um, Rowan took a plant from the crowd and drew it into <laughs> Roman Reigns. Mitch the yeah. plant? Yeah, Mitch the plant. <laughs> uh, I believe he was a ficus. Yeah, yeah. That, not, nothing like being having a uh, plant named after you on TV. It's very <laughs> lovely. Well, yeah, it's <sighs> I believe it's better than Abby the Mitch. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Come and yes, my it. name my name rhymes with cuss words. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not going with that. Uh, okay, good. In a uh, yeah, Rowan uh, Rowan used the the camera <laughs> crane to hit Roman Reigns. I think it was what this needed, what it needed to be. To go into the actual match for people to actually care about the match because they did some uh, pretty good shit in my mind. Right, and, and that was the whole point. It was to get Eric Rowan like, oh, uh, to get him to be a formidable opponent. You know what I mean? And, and they did this, a good job at it. Be, before this segment, I didn't care about this rivalry, but. If this segment didn't happen, I doubt I would have cared about the match going into Class of Champions. See? There you go. Well, okay. But I don't is... think that... Are they even fighting at Class of Champions? It's every... I don't think they are. No, what? it's at Class of Champions. Yeah, it's Class of Champions. Oh, my champions. God. Really? Yeah. It's this Sunday. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Okay, I see it. But... So basically, he's the only person on that bitch that don't have a title, but yet he's fighting at a show where yeah, only they, titles are defended. Hey, yeah. hey, wait, hold on. Wait. That, that's when I say, that's when I say, Roman must yay, WWE canon. The fucking irony. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yay for oh. canon. Yay for next, canon. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say next, we mean NXT, please. <laughs> Barely defeated Ember Moon. What are your, what are your thoughts, Kaliko? Squash. Oh. Well, not a squash. Oh, but... I didn't give my thoughts on the Rowan uh, Reigns thing. No, I was just, I was just thinking next. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks. You... Next, well, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, here real quick. To, uh, it won't take long. I, it's simple. The, my opinion, just my opinion. It did nothing for me, and I'm. St it, it's as it was before. I am not looking forward to it. It might as well not exist to me. Yeah, well, you're still gonna. That's just me, though. Match. I mean, I mean, I don't have the WWE Network. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you won't be watching the match. I canceled. Okay. I canceled it as a protest move in, in June. But I right. no, I I can get it back any time, so I might be. Well, that means these uh, predictions at the end are gonna be gonna be hella quick. Um, next. <laughs> no, I'll get it. I'm lying. I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> but I haven't had it for a few months in protest. Kofi Kingston came out to uh, a loud reaction, and he talked about how he beat up Randy Orton in 2009, oh. ten years ago. Okay, and this was the best part Randy of the Orton came out. night. And they did a cheap, poor no, man, like watered it. down, whatever you want to call it, re trying to recapture the, boom drop. the moment of 10 years ago. I and like it. I'm just going to say, not as fun as the first time. 
I like yeah. it. I know you you can never repeat the first time. Yeah, but you'll never they repeat. brought they brought an excitement back to that to that feud leading in to Sunday as for the go home. In my opinion, that was a really good go home. So because it, it it stoked up the story, the past of the story, it made you see like okay, there's a deep history between these two. Yeah, it's a parody of what history. happened last time. In well, no, it's a it's history repeating itself. Yes. I, ironically, yeah. Well, right. okay, you could you could say that, uh, but you know we've been they're hearkening. They're heart. They're hearkening back, right? We've been conditioned to believe that um, whoever wins on SmackDown is going to lose at the pay per view. Not all the time, but not very all often. Not you're, all right. Time. you're right. You're right. You're right. Often, all, all, most of the time, yes, but not every time. Why? So that if you had Randy Orton kind of countering that and maybe make an RKO through the table, it makes Orton look good going into the paid preview and kind of gives Kofi Kingston some heat to get back at the paid preview. Honestly, Orton is one of the legends on the WWE roster right now. He doesn't need that. I he already, in my opinion, he doesn't need that. He already has it. And you're like so Kofi. All he had, in my opinion, like in terms of legitimacy, it's only up for him. If, if Orton were to beat him, I think he's stationary. No, There's well, nowhere to go. What I'm trying to say is if if Randy Orton put Kofi Kingston through the table. Kind of counteracting, counteracting history from ten years ago, okay. and it kind of gives him, gives Kofi Kingston an, a a little bit of an uphill battle to fight for a uh, class of champions. Okay, well I'll tell you why because they already did that upskill battle with RKO, uh, or the the new team with Randy Orton. What's it called with Randy Orton and the Revival? F it's like R R. R-K-O-T-O or something like that. Yeah, F-T-R-K-O. yeah. F-T-R-K-O. F-T-R-K-O. <laughs> okay, T-R-K-O. Sorry. It's fucking uh, R-K-O. Like, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. But, but yeah. real quick, so they, they did their damage, I think, two weeks in a row, really. Yeah, they've been got kind of over on So them, yeah. if you think about it, it it made sense. It didn't make sense if Kofi didn't get a come up at some, unless for sure he wins. But it kind of, it evens it out now going into the pay per view because Kofi was already getting stopped. All right. It, yeah. I don't, I don't know. The segment just laid flat for me because they were trying to recap some magic. It, it's on my eye the beholder. I see your point. Yeah. All right. Next match: Chad Gable defeated Shane McMahon in the King of the Ring semifinals in a two out of three falls match with special referee. Kevin Owens. Yeah, you've already heard what I think about this, so go ahead, Coleco and James. Right guy won. He got fired. He's going to NXT. Next. So, <laughs> I love Gable. Come on, man. No, I'm talking about Owens. Oh, ha! Huh. Yeah, he did Owens. send a cryptic tweet that... Owens uh, is it, going to NXT. He, he did yeah, send yeah. a... A crypt, I don't think I think he's just uh, trolling the fans, but he did right. send a quick uh, a cryptic tweet that in no in uh what is it in Morse code I believe said NXT. So yeah. Uh, you know, I think this was the smartest and best way to get Chad Gable over, considering Elias was injured. Right. It it, it fused two storylines together. Well, Chad right. Gable is the giant killer, and McMahon is the mountain. Right. And yeah. it progresses the Kevin Owens um, rivalry with him. And it gives Chad Gable one of the biggest wins in his life, beating Shane McMahon at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, which so, which I kept telling y'all, man, if y'all hadn't been watching them 205s, you would have saw this shit coming a long time ago. I told y'all that boy was... Man... Man. I I told you I'm just going. I'm still going with Gable, even though my mind says Vince and all them love Corbin. Oh, and it Corbin's won't surprise winning. me. Corbin's See, winning. no, I think they're going with the giant killer thing. They, that Corbin doesn't need the King of the Ring to get over, but Gable mm. does. And oh, did you guys know that they trademarked? And you're gonna laugh. Did you know that they trademarked a nickname for I believe Chad Gable? Do you want to hear what it's gonna might be? 
Yeah, shorty something. Shorty G. <laughs> shorty G, yeah. I hope not. Please don't call him Shorty G. That is Burial by Golden Shovel. Oh, I hope not. They and trademarked that. He's going to lose the Cor- he's going to lose the Corbin and- Why would you trademark something that is such dog shit? <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. I mean, they're going to trade for if Ben Corbin wins, have it. I am not. Uh, I am boycotting WWE for a week. <laughs> well, get ready to boycott WWE for a week. Oh, okay. So let's, that would be a pleasant surprise if what I think happens happens. Okay. But uh, we are done with our coverage of SmackDown, and now it is time to wrestling with Class of Champions. We are reviewing all the matches. There are 11 in total as of right now. The first match yeah. up, AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander. AJ, next. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I would have said that a few weeks ago. They're trying to go heavy with Cedric Alexander. What way, what better way are you to get Cedric Alexander over than to give him a win on a pay-per-view over, a- or over AJ Styles? Uh... I'm going with Cedric. Not gonna I happen. can't believe it. I can't believe it, but I'm going with an upset. I'm going with AJ as well. It would be safe to go with AJ, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to go on a line. Drew Gulak versus Humberto Carrillo and Lince Dorado. Carrillo. How- Carrillo. Carrillo. How is Drew Gulak going to win, Calico? Yeah. Squad. That's one long squash. It, it's going to be like a 10-minute squash. But that's not a squash. <laughs> squash, <laughs> squash nonetheless. I was thinking about, uh, you know, something that he does to win the match. Oh. Well, that's just death by his PowerPoint presentation. Oh, we got there. Oh, oh. It took a minute. We got there. We, we got there. <laughs> Hey, you could go either way. It's going to be both. Wow. <laughs> yeah, PowerPoint, I do like, obviously. A, a squashy PowerPoint presentation. That's what's good. <laughs> Watch. Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Miz. Nakamura. Ma- Nakamura. My heart, my heart says Nakamura. My mind says The Miz. I'm kind of the same way, but I'm going with Nakamura anyway. And the reason being, because he's only one reign away from... Erasing Chris Jericho. Oh. I'm going with Nakamura... And, you know, erasing Chris... It makes sense for Miz to win because it's erasing Chris Jericho from the history books a little bit. That's what I think. Even though my heart... Because, oh my God, I love some Nakamura. But my heart... <laughs> my heart... I'm, I'm trading my heart right now for this brain. But whatever. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Next, no, I'm, I'm just <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I'm, just playing. I, I'm just joking. So it's got to be Bliss and Cross, right? Because they have right. yet to have a, a a team solidify those titles. Yeah, it. You know, it was crazy. Like it was supposed to be the Iconics in a sort of way, but they never got really got a, a rivalry started. Actually, they were better as the chicken shit heels, but that's just me. Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan. What's your favorite mm-hmm. food, Coleco? Vegetable, and it's a damn squash. Squash! Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks. <laughs> now, this is where it gets interesting. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. Becky, no L- Becky, Lynch, Becky Lynch for the win. She's the cover of 2020. She's got to win. Mitch. Okay, this is the one that has my heart and my mind uh, different and pulled to different sides. 
my heart says Becky Lynch. My mind says a long-term feud with Lynch and Banks. Lynch will get the title back, but I think Banks wins. Yeah. I think yeah. I don't think they're ready to take the belt off Becky. Not a, especially I, well, not okay. in the first match between Sasha Here, and Becky. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Here, let me explain. Okay, when I say that, I believe it'll go this way. Like the way Sasha wins, it, however she wins. They have another dust up around Survivor Series that Becky wins, so or sooner. So it, it's not going to be like a long reign. She's going to get it back, but it's going to be to push the storyline even further, like to where it's like a headline. It's already a headline storyline, but go deeper with it. Of like just to put put deeper, you know, uh, hit things that they've been through and realize deeper storyline hints into it, stuff like that, you know, go further with it. What I'm thinking is Becky wins, but the rivalry with Sasha Banks continues. I don't say Sasha doesn't get it down the line, uh, but that's I, the... I do see the rivalry continuing. But that's that's why I say Sasha wins, because it. I I agree with you, but I, it's, I don't, I don't see it's a harder road if Sasha loses, in my opinion, for them to keep it going. Like that. What? I think like that. I, I think, think Sasha it's... needs to get a one-up and, and needs to get a... Because Becky's already the man. Sasha needs to get something on Becky, in my opinion. The New Day versus the Revival. I'm going with the Revival on this. I'm going New with... Day. Oh, sorry, Clinko. New day. Go ahead. Yeah, you could be the tiebreaker. New day. I'm going new day. Oh my god. I'm going with the revival. Yeah, fuck the revival. <laughs> I love the revival. <laughs> but that's what you said. I I only mean hate when what? I mean love. FTR yeah. is for it can be it can mean too. It can mean either forever the revival or fuck the revival. You choose. <laughs> It never meant forever the revival. It's always been fucked the yeah, revival. Yeah, see? And nobody can tell me differently. Damn it. Not if you ask them. <laughs> I'm going to ask them. It's a, it's a term of endearment. True. Kofi can if you ask them, they say forever the revival. No. Kofi. 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 Bailey versus Charlotte. Bailey. Bailey. Bailey, big booty Bailey. I, I was gonna say something about that. I I keep hearing that people say that, and for the first time, I noticed it looks like she's got two tires in that damn in those damn pants. Like, Bro, oh my god, been... her, oh my god, her ass extends, her cheeks ass extend more than I thought a human's can could. Woo. You didn't notice that in NXT. We got some problems. I wasn't looking. I and I'm a man. I usually always look. But okay, hear hear me out. For some reason, I didn't find Bailey. Never found Bailey's face attractive. Her she's face cute. always turned me off. Not to me. Not to me. She's got she's... to me. Uh, this is okay. This is not. This is only my what my fa- my tastes are weird. I guess this is my taste. To me, she has a bitter beer face. Have, that's just me. That yeah, that's just Such me. That, that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it. I'm sorry, Bailey. I'm just doing this for entertainment. I love you. Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman <laughs> versus Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. She's cute. I'm just joking. Uh, this is where the Robert Roode Dolph Ziggler gets the titles. I'm... Oh, you mean you mean Rudolph the Impromptu Tag Team? Yeah, Rudolph Ziegler <laughs> had a very shiny title. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see. I'm yeah. I'm unfortunately I'm gonna go with the impromptu tag team as well. And if Vince ever saw them, he always thought they blowed. <laughs> <laughs> Which one has the red nose? I'm going with Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler too. Oh. I think that's where they're heading anyway. Um, Seth yeah. versus Braun Strowman. Uh, real quick, I was gonna say instead of the red nose, it's the the mustache of Rudes. But yeah. uh, okay, uh, Seth Rollins or say again? I'm sorry, uh, Braun. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, okay, you go first, Kalika. 
Seth. It's Seth. I'm also going with Seth, but I'm going to say the Fiend causes Braun Strowman the match. Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, I have a unique prediction. Um, whoever wins it, so I'm not even going to say someone's going to win it. Whoever wins it, it's going to lead to Braun and Seth and the Fiend triple threat at Hell in a Cell. That's what I was thinking as well. If it's not, and in all honesty, the Fiend doesn't need the title. He doesn't need to be in the title picture, and he doesn't but, need that okay. to get over. But okay, real quick, I'll tell you something. The title needs him, James. The title needs him. He is a one. He is a one of a kind, out of nowhere. You, we haven't had one of these since the Undertaker came. He, he, where everyone's jaw drops at the sight of him and at, at his cadence and what he does. This is a one-of-a-kind character. You don't wait to build this guy up if he's got it already, especially with he's not new. You know, he's just repackaged his character. You go with him when you have everyone around him like, like you have the crowd just losing their shit, like saying, oh, this is the best thing ever. You don't sit on that. You go with it. And they're, I think they're finally realizing they're going to do that. So. Either way, it's either going to lead uh, either to, like you said, a set Rollins, Braun Strowman, Fiend right. match, or a Braun Strowman match, or a set Rollins match. If they were, yeah, if they, I, 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 I thought if they, because I, I still, I think regardless that Bray Wyatt, either going to win at Hell in the Cell or Survivor Series. Like, he might somehow not get the title at No Mercy and then win at Survivor Series. I think by the end of this year, The Fiend will be the WWE Champion. Alright. And that will conclude our, our coverage of Class of Champions. Wait until next week for all those predictions to go to Hell in the Handbasket. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. And... If you like the show, uh, please like, subscribe, comment on both YouTube and CastBox. You can find me on Twitter at JamesJace993. Where can they find Coleco? I am Coleco, and I'm going to be uh, getting ready to talk all this fo fantasy football stuff, get some wrestling going. It's going to be a good weekend. Cool. And where can they find Mitch Mayhem? And you can find me at Mitch Mayhem X. I'm also in all sports right now. I'm uh, on NBA, the new NBA 2K. So I'm on, I don't uh, watch walking sports. I only like my I like my <laughs> sports gimmick. <laughs> I got you. Hey, they're all gimmick to a big extent. So. <laughs> and you have been watching wrestling with. Oh, you didn't know?